Yeah, I was. You see, I takes you know great measures to make sure we're all aware. There's, there's signs hanging in every dorm bathroom, um, in every hall. My bathroom personally has like a little timer, so you take one minute showers. You don't waste a lot of water. How do you feel about drinking recycled water? Um, honestly, drinking recycled water is fine. Uh, it does sound kind of gross, and I have personally seen it and tasted it. It tasted fine, but like the first product was still kind of uh, yellowish in color. So, uh, but yeah, other than that, I. Think people knowing that there is a problem, enforcing legislation, enacting legislation will be a real challenge. Um, and so politically more than anything else, because it will be somewhat unpopular, I'm sure. But realistically, we're in a really serious situation. Um, things like groundwater withdrawal is not something that currently we're monitoring and controlling or managing. Um, and that, as our drought becomes more extreme, is going to become much, much more obvious. And that is something that really does require sort of governmental level um, in sort of uh, legislation. Um, other things also to do with infrastructure uh, could be something that has done, been done at a, a legislation level. So if we're perhaps switching to more desalinization, um, that would be something that we would have to have sort of government level interest in because communities along the coastline don't necessarily have the money to invest in that sort of infrastructure. And since the bulk of the water is getting used by industry, I probably wouldn't advocate for legal um, enforcement of water uh, restrictions on the general public. Um, I think education can go a long way to having them take those measures we talked about of saving water around the house. Um, going forward though, the best way to regulate anything is really with a, a price on the resource such that the scarcity of the resource and the environmental impacts of using the resource are factored into the cost of that. So people would pay higher water bills, they'd be more interested in conserving water and, and so forth. Yeah, I mean, I think when, when you start talking about war and conflict like that, uh, in particular where it's a specific resource that you're interested in, I really think you need to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. So if you're dealing with neighbors that are allies and have other interests in common, they're probably less likely to go to war if there's already some destabilization in the political or economic system and the, and the resource comes uh, into that, then they're probably going to be more prone to war. So I, I would say maybe it's too soon to conclude that water is somehow in and of itself not um, going to prompt war. Uh, so